Daniel Hale Williams was an African-American surgeon who specialized in cardiology. He performed the first successful heart surgery and founded the first black-owned hospital in the United States. Daniel Hale Williams was born on January 18, 1856 in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. He was the son of Daniel Williams Jr. and Sarah Price Williams. Daniel Hale Williams' ancestry consisted of African Americans, European Americans, and Native Americans. His grandmother had been a slave on the same plantation as Frederick Douglass, who was also Daniel Hale Williams' cousin. Daniel Hill Williams and grandfather and grandfather were both barbers. His father co-founded the National Equal Rights League. The National Equal Rights League was a civil rights organization founded during the Civil War. In 1866, when Daniel Hill Williams was 10 years old, his father passed away from tuberculosis. Without the money Daniel's father made, his mother couldn't afford to take care of all her children. Sarah Williams had no choice but to send them away to live with close friends and relatives. Daniel was sent away to a family friend in Baltimore, Maryland to be a shoemaking apprentice. However, shoemaking was not Daniel Hale Williams' true calling. He eventually became extremely bored at shoemaking and decided to run away and rejoin his family in Rockford, Illinois. As a teenager, Daniel decided to move to Janesville, Wisconsin join his sister Sally. Both siblings were able to get jobs in the barber shop. Sally was a hair designer who specialized in hair coloring and Daniel Hale Williams was a barber. During his time in Janesville, Daniel Hale Williams began to explore different paths for his future. He attended a school called Classical Academy where he studied the bass violin. Daniel performed as a musician at the Meyer Opera House. Unsure of his path, at one point he also considered going into law. When Daniel Hale Williams was 22 years old, he decided that he wanted to be a doctor. He became an apprentice to one of the best doctors in the area, Henry Palmer. Henry Palmer ran the largest military hospital during the Civil War. As Henry Palmer's apprentice, Daniel Hale Williams made the patients comfortable before they were treated. Then, he would watch and take notes as Henry Palmer operated on the patient. Other times, Dr. Palmer would have him do medical tests, mix medicines, and learn from textbooks. In the year 1880, after three years of medical training, Daniel was accepted into Chicago Medical College, now known as Northwestern University. He did not have the money to pay for his education, so he went to his mother for assistance. Unfortunately, she was not able to help. In the end, Daniel Hill Williams' friend Harry Anderson paid for two years of his college education. Daniel finally earned a doctor's degree in medicine and graduated in 1883. Daniel Hale Williams built a, a successful practice as a local doctor. He performed operations in homes on tables because during, during that time, due to unsanitary conditions, treatment in hospitals would often make the patient even more ill. Louis Pasteur, a French scientist, was able to prove that germs in hospitals often infect patients. Daniel Hale Williams agreed with this discovery and always made sure everything was clean. He constantly cleaned all of his tools with certain chemicals so that his patients would not be infected. Daniel Hale Williams built a reputation of being an extremely skilled surgeon. In 1889, he was appointed to the Illinois Bill Board of Health. Daniel Hale Williams became increasingly aware that African-American patients and doctors could not get access to hospitals or hospital jobs in Chicago. Determined to correct this problem, Daniel Hale Williams, through no small feat, established Providence Hospital on the south side of Chicago in 1891. He rallied the support of some empathetic prominent whites and sought the support of strong community members to raise money for the hospital. Nominal and material donations were also secured by some local businesses. In particular, Armour Meatpacking Company who provided the down payment for the building. The hospital had a training program for black nurses and physicians. Providence Hospital was open to all patients, black and white. It was the first non-segregated hospital in the United States. Providence Hospital was a great success. But one fitful day changed Daniel's life forever. 
A man named James Cornish was stabbed in the heart in a bar fight. James Cornish was dressed straight to Providence Hospital. There was no external bleeding, and the wound was hard to see unless you examined it closely. Dr. Daniel Hill Williams determined that a major vessel or the heart was injured. At that time, there were no x-rays, thus doctors had to examine wounds manually. Daniel considered performing an open-heart surgery to save the man's life. Many physicians during that day and age said that the heart area should be left alone to prevent further injuries. Doing the surgery would put Daniel's career and reputation in danger. But he decided to proceed with the surgery anyway, knowing that it would save James Cornish's life. Dr. Daniel Hale Williams saw that an internal mammary artery was also damaged, so he tied the vessel to stop the bleeding. Williams saw that the heart muscle did not need to be sewn, but the pericardium did. The pericardium is a sac that surrounds the heart. It was cut open by the knife that stabbed, that stabbed joint James Cornish. Daniel sewed the pericardium to prevent future pain. 51 days later, James Cornish left the hospital with great health and lived for another 50 years. It was because of this success that Daniel Hill Williams went down in history. During this period of time, Grover Cleveland was President of the United States of America. When Grover Cleveland heard that Daniel Hill Williams performed the first successful hope and heart surgery, he was amazed. President Grover Cleveland almost immediately asked Daniel Hill Williams to be the chief surgeon at Howard University's Freedman's Hospital in Washington, D.C. Daniel accepted the offer and began to improve the hospital right away. First, he reorganized and sanitized the entire facility so that the patients would not be infected in the hospital. Just like Providence Hospital, he was able to install a training school for black nurses along with a multiracial staff. Freedman's Hospital lacked sufficient funds because most whites did not have the confidence in a hospital whose chief surgeon was an African American. The hospital gained more patients as the hospital's good reputation grew. As chief surgeon at Ho Howard University's Freedman's Hospital, Daniel Hale Williams operated on many people. Total, Daniel Hale Williams operated on 533 people. Out of the 533, only eight of them were unsuccessful. During this time, that was an extremely good record. It was because of that record, more people began to go to Freedman Hospital and respect Daniel Hale Williams. Daniel Hale Williams settled in Washington, D.C. and bought a house where his mother and two youngest sisters came to live with him. Later, Daniel Hale Williams wanted to be a member of the American Medical Association in Washington, D.C., but sadly, membership was limited to white men only. Thus, Daniel Hale Williams founded a new guild named the National Medical Association for Black Professionals. This, this created more opportunities for blacks in the medical profession. Daniel Hale Williams was the only African American doctor at the Medical Congress in Washington, D.C. In the year 1898, Daniel Hale Williams married a woman named Alice Johnson. The couple then moved back to Chicago, where Daniel Hale Williams once again worked at Providence Hospital. Daniel Hale Williams continued to do great work as a pioneer surgeon. In the year 1912, Daniel Hale Williams resigned from his position as surgeon at Providence Hospital to be a surgeon at St. Luke's Hospital. It was one of the most vast and wealthiest hospitals in Chicago. Daniel Hale Williams decided that it was best for his career. One year later, Daniel Hale Williams was accepted into the American College of Surgeons, the first African American ever to be accepted. Daniel Hale Williams worked the next two decades as a clinical surgeon at St. Luke's. He retired in 1926 after surviving a terrible stroke. Daniel Hale Williams lived out his retirement in Idlewild, Michigan until his death on August 4, 1931. He was 75 years of age. Even after Daniel Hale Williams' death, his hospital continued to live on. Unfortunately, after five successful decades of treating patients, Providence Hospital finally closed in 1987 due to financial strains. 
Nonetheless, the, ho- the educational facilities of the hospital were resurrected in 1994, providing training for nurses. Daniel Hill Williams accomplished many things in his lifetime, and everything counted for the future. Daniel Hale Williams was able to get into a great medical college. He opened a hospital and performed the first ever successful open heart surgery. He was even made chief surgeon at a hospital in Washington, D.C. that opened up many opportunities for African-American doctors and nurses. Williams gave African-Americans hope in a time of extreme adversity. Patients who lived in complete poverty and had no money were able to receive treatment due to William's efforts. No matter where he went, Daniel always helped people. Even in his old age, he worked as a clinical surgeon, treating minorities along with the poor. Daniel's success left his legacy that not only proved that change is possible, but with hope, strong will, and determination, the possibilities are endless. This legacy leaves the world into new possibilities.